Sensual interplay and spiritual longing. Craving, ecstasy and enlightenment, the age-old conflict between religion and sexuality. How can the anarchic power of sexuality be tamed when you're young? What's allowed and what isn't? We hear the personal experiences of a conservative Muslima, a Protestant girl, a Jewish courting couple, and a Hindu before his wedding. In this city on the Bosporus, liberality and religious restraints meet head on, open-mindedness and the strict morality of Islam. 25-year-old Hulia is a successful fashion journalist and staunch Muslim. For her, this is no contradiction in terms. Her glossy magazine Aisha is aimed at the fashion-conscious but always modestly dressed Turkish woman. Gerek yazılanlar, gerek kurallarla zaten bize bunları öğretiyor. Yani nefsinize hakim olun diyor. Evet yaşayın, sosyal olun ama e, net çizgiler var. Bu çizgileri aşmayın diyor. The female image that she conveys in Aisha has met with success. Facebook reveals that more than 15,000 young Muslims subscribe to it. This magazine, the vogue for the conservative, fashion-conscious Muslim woman, has been increasing its circulation for years and is expanding successfully into the world of Islam. Yet even though Hulia would describe herself as a traditional Muslim with a deep faith, she pays a price for her success. Zannediyorum ki yaptığım iş biraz insanları ürkütüyor. E, sosyal bir kısınız, koşturuyorsunuz, çalışıyorsunuz. Giyinmeyi seviyorsunuz, hayatı seviyorsunuz bir kere. Ee, bu belki erkekler için biraz ürkütücü bir şey olabilir. Hulia has never had a boyfriend. She avoids any physical contact and intimacy with men. Anything else would be a violation of her religious faith. Sexuality is reserved for marriage. The only men in her life are her two brothers. Mesela bir mekana gidiyorsak oranın örnek veriyorum alkollü olmamasına özen gösteriyoruz. Ya da işte e, bir tatil köyüne gidiyorsak erkek kadın ayrı plajlar olmasına dikkat ediyoruz. Yani hem güzel yaşayıp hem de aynı zamanda belirlenen kuralların da dışarı, dışına e, çıkmamaya özen gösteriyoruz. Elimizden geldiğince tabii ki e, o dizginlemek konusunda en önemli olan insanın e, nefsini manevi yönüyle e, nasıl anlatayım frenlemesi. She was 12 when her father died in an accident. With her strong religious faith, Hulia gradually took on the role of head of the family, a position traditionally held by men. Hani bize şart koşmadılar ama şöyle, biz kesinlikle hani duruş olarak hani İslam'a uygun bir şekilde, dine uygun bir şekilde duruşumuz vardı. Asla benim için modern bir hayat uygun bir seçenek olmadı yani öyle söyleyeyim. Ha, şöyle söyleyeyim, muhafazakar yerine iyi getiriyor muyum? Getiriyorum ama fazlasıyla değil tabii ki. Yani modern hayatım da biraz var diyelim. Muhafazakar hayatım. Yarı yarıya diyelim bunun cevabını. Babanın yerini tamamlayamaz ama benim gözümde hani abim evin direği olarak görünüyor. Hani bir nevi benim gözümde ablam evin direğidir. Hulia does not speak about her sexual needs and desires with us or her brothers. She has girlfriends with whom she can talk. Like her, they want to marry as virgins, an ancient religious law, not just in Islam. 
the woman should belong to just one man. Only her husband may deflower her and father her children. Ben evlilik öncesi birlikteliğe doğru bakmıyorum. Bir kere benim değerlerim buna doğru ya bunu doğru bulmuyor ve ben de doğru bulmuyorum. Kesinlikle yanlış olduğu kanaatindeyim ve bunun normal bir şeymiş gibi gösterilmesinden de açıkçası rahatsızım. Bu dünyada bu şekilde yaşanıyor hemen hemen ama bence Müslüman olan insanların buna dikkat etmesi gerekiyor. Die Sexualität, die Jungfräulichkeit hat ganz viel mit der Ehre zu tun. Und das bedeutet, dass man vor der Ehe keinen Geschlechtsverkehr haben sollte. Und deshalb ist der Druck auf die jungen Mädchen sehr, sehr stark, weil bei ihnen das bewiesen werden kann, nachweislich ist, ob sie jungfräulich in die Ehe gehen oder nicht. Eigentlich heißt es im Islam, dass auch der Mann keinen vorehelichen Sex haben sollte. Die Jungs sollten sich also auch zurückhalten, nur ist es bei ihnen nicht zu testen. Es ist einfach nicht möglich. Bei den Mädchen ist es möglich, weil sie entjungfert werden und durch äh, das Zerreißen des Jungfernhäuschens eben etwas Blut rausfließt. Und das ist ein Drama, das geht gar nicht. Dramas like this seldom occur in the trendy Berlin Quarter of Prenzlauer Berg. The social mixing between the sexes is casual and relaxed. At any rate, life here does not appear to be influenced by religion. Not for high school graduate Elena either. She's 18 years old and a practicing Protestant. She lives very near to Gethsemane Church and feels deeply rooted in the community. Bei der Sexualität, da habe ich meine Richtlinien und ich weiß nicht, wie, wie sehr die mit, der, mit meinem Glauben übereinstimmen. Also mit meinem persönlichen Glauben kann ich das super vereinbaren, denn ich sage, ich bin evangelische Christin, ich glaube an einen Gott, aber trotzdem äh, möchte ich mir nicht in der Hinsicht zu viel vorschreiben lassen, sondern mein Leben so leben, wie, wie ich es für richtig halte, sozusagen. Music is Eleanor's great passion. She sings regularly in a gospel choir and performs in church concerts. Singing, she says, brings people closer together, and sometimes there's even a chance to flirt, too. Wenn ich irgendwie jemanden toll finde, dann flirte ich auch gern mal. Ja, auf jeden Fall. In Eleanor's room there's space for Christian symbols as well as for a picture of Marilyn Monroe. She finds both exciting. Sexualität ist was Positives auf jeden Fall. Also das habe ich halt auch so. Ich habe keine negativen Erfahrungen bis jetzt damit gemacht und. Ähm, Ich bin auch in einer Familie aufgewachsen, die sehr offen damit umgeht. Also nicht gibt eigentlich keine Tabuthemen. Elena still lives with her family. They're all believers. Her mother Iris, her younger sister Johanna and father Detlef. Both girls were told the facts of life before they started school. It was important that there should be no embarrassment. Aber wenn Fragen aufkamen, gab es kein Ausweichen in dem Sinne, dass man sich hinter irgendwelchen Märchen versteckt hat. Ne? Und ähm, das war eben doch ein, ein körperlichen Umgang. Das geht ja damit auch los, ne? ob man sich jetzt sozusagen versteckt oder ob man in der Familie sozusagen im Bad auch zu zweit oder zu dritt sein kann, was sich ja einfach mal ergibt. Shows of affection and physical contact are perfectly natural for the whole family. When Eleanor brought boyfriends home, nobody objected. Irgendwann äh, blieb auch über Nacht ein äh, Freund hier und dann war das aber auch normal. Also sie war dann einfach auch schon in einem Alter, wo ich sage, okay, da war ich selber auch schon in einem Alter, wo, wo man dann schon äh, die, den körperlichen Kontakt einfach gesucht hat. 
sex before marriage, no problem for her parents and no longer one for her church either. Die Bewertung meinetwegen von vorehelichen Beziehungen, das hat sich auch vollständig geändert in der protestantischen äh, Kirche, auch in off offiziellen Stellungnahmen, auch meinetwegen in dem, was in Konfirmandenunterricht oder sonst wo vermittelt wird. Ähm, da finden Sie nur noch sehr selten ähm, ein intensives Bestehen darauf, dass man eben ähm, sowohl als Mann wie als Frau jungfräulich in die Ehe zu gehen hat. The Evangelical Church has accepted the realities of a society in which sex before marriage is the rule and not the exception. Eleanor was also quite young when she had her first sexual experience. Also mein erstes Mal war, da war ich 16. Das war mit einem guten Freund, den hatte ich, den hat, kannte ich noch nicht so lange, aber mit dem hatte ich viel zu tun in der Zeit und irgendwie war der so ein ganz erfahrener Typ und äh, ich weiß nicht, ich wollte nicht mit irgendwen auf irgendeiner Party betrunken mein erstes Mal haben und ich wollte auf jeden Fall jemanden Erfahrenes haben, nicht auch noch so ein Kerl, der auch keine Ahnung hat, also das fand ich irgendwie bescheuert. Ich war halt bei ihm zu Hause und dann haben wir halt miteinander geschlafen und das war also ziemlich genauso, wie ich es mir vorgestellt hatte. Jetzt nicht super toll, hat halt wehgetan, aber ich wollte es irgendwie hinter mir haben. Also das hört sich jetzt komisch an, aber es war jetzt nicht so, dass er nur mit mir schlafen wollte, sondern ich bin auf ihn zugekommen und er wusste, dass ich äh, noch Jungfrau bin. Und er hat auch gesagt, ich mach das wirklich, ich mach nur, was du willst und du kannst sofort Stopp sagen und wenn was weh tut und bla bla bla. So. Und so war das dann halt auch. Also für ihn war das jetzt, glaube ich, nicht so toll, aber ich hatte halt mein erstes Mal. Also an dem Tag habe ich mich wirklich wie so ein anderer Mensch gefühlt, als ich da nach Hause gefahren bin. dachte ich so, das ist die ganze Zeit irgendwie voll komisch, aber es war ziemlich cool. Pretty cool. Like performing on stage at her matriculation party. I was five and he was six. We rode on horses made of sticks. He were black and I were white. He would always win the fight, bang, bang. He shut me down, bang, bang. I hit the ground, bang, bang. That awful sound, bang, bang. I used to shut you down. Israel, the land of the Bible. Here, liberals, orthodox and ultra-orthodox Jews meet. They disagree about the right path to follow. Tel Aviv is an oasis of liberality. Shira and Avihu live here. We met in the opera. I did it like I was in the opera. He was... What does it mean, opera? And... And I... And it was a nitzav then. A nitzav. That was seven years ago, at a casting session at the Tel Aviv Opera. ואני אומרת, יואו, שירה, מה קורה לך? מה, את רוצה להריח חולצות של אנשים שאת לא מכירה? זה לא הגיוני. ומצאתי את עצמי ככה מרחרחת את החולצה באיזשהו שלב, חשבת, יואו, את לגמרי משוגעת. ובאיזשהו שלב קראו לי, שמתי את החולצה, אמרתי, אבל מעניין של מי, של מי החולצה הזאת, ואז הוא בא ללבוש את החולצה. זהו, that's it. The atmosphere is electric when they're together, and they display this openly. A scandal for Avihu's parents, they've severed contact with their son. They can't accept his open love relationship and their extrovert life in Tel Aviv. I was born in Bnei Brak. Bnei Brak is a Shkuna Orthodox Dutit, a Duka. My father was born in the time of the answer. לא היה לנו כך אה, אה, תקשורת מילולית במקום הזה. אבל אבא שלי לא דיבר איתי, אבא שלי דיבר באופן כללי איך להתייחס לנשים. אני מאוד שמח על זה שהיום אני מרגיש שעשיתי התפתחות מדהימה מהמקום שהגעתי ממנו והמקום שאני נמצא בו היום. 
אני גדלתי בבית שהיה מאוד פתוח לזה. היה לי, יש לי אימא כזו, אז במשך השנים נחשפתי לזה הרבה יותר. אותי מעניין מאוד אנשים כמו אביהו דווקא, שבאים מבית ממש לא כזה, ושלא חווים, לא שומעים את זה הרבה, ובכל זאת נושאים את זה בתוכם. אז עם טרדיציונלים אורתודוקסים יהודנטום, גיבט זה אין לי גם כאן אופקלירום. Da wird die Braut vor der Hochzeitsnacht von der Mutter mal beiseite genommen oder der Bräutigam eben vom Vater. Aber die Kinder werden nicht richtig aufgeklärt. Die Kinder merken von klein auf, was es erlaubt, was es nicht erlaubt. Wen darf man berühren? Mit wem darf man zusammen sein? Was schickt sich? Was kommt nicht gut an? Also die lernen das intuitiv, wie sie sich verhalten sollen. Aber eine Aufklärung im Sinne von, jetzt lernen wir mal, wo kommen eigentlich die kleinen Kinder her, die gibt es nicht. Ja. They live together like a married couple, share both their table and their bed. Their open attitude to sex isn't something that can be taken for granted in religious Israel. For Orthodox Jews like Avihu's parents, sex before marriage is definitely taboo. It takes a great deal of strength for many young people to disregard the strict rules, perhaps even to break with their own family. Yet Shira and Avihu see themselves as practicing Jews. ומה שאני אוהב ביהדות זה שמדברים, לא מפרידים בין הרוח לפיזי. וההפך, הנשמה, הרוח צריכה להעלות את הפיזי. זה שאני אוהב אותה, אני אוהב אותה. זה כל מה שזה, זה הבשר, זה הפרצוף. ברכיים. זה הברכיים, זה כל מה שהיא לא רואה, כל מה שהיא לא אוהבת בעצמה, אני נורא אוהב. כי זה שלה, ואני לא יכול להפריד את זה ממנה. It's no coincidence that Shira is both a devout Jew and liberal. Her mother is a rabbi. Throughout the whole of Israel, there are only 32 female liberal rabbis out of thousands of males, mainly orthodox. For devout Indians, everything that happens before marriage is just an insignificant phase. For them, real life only begins when they marry. In one of the best districts of New Delhi, Arpit, the son of a hotelier, is preparing for his wedding. The 27-year-old is pretty excited. Every single one of his relatives has traveled here for the occasion. Weddings, according to classical Hindu ritual, are family affairs. In India, the question as to who marries whom is not decided by the bridegroom. No, the entire clan has a say. In India, everyone has got a very big family. Like, uh, most of the people they have a big family. Now the concept of nuclear family is coming in. So the family itself, it's a big grand affair which goes on, like for the wedding. And it's like a whole week of functions. There are too many customs, like in Hindu wedding itself. You begin with, uh, you meet a family and you will decide, okay, I want to marry this girl. On her wedding day, the bride, Ankita, waits in her parents' home 30 kilometers away from that of her bridegroom. She didn't have any say in the choice of her husband either. She knows that after the wedding, she will live with Arpit and his parents. She will then belong to the groom's family. Like the new family and, you know, new sisters, new parents, new set of parents. It, it's a little bit scary, but you come to terms with it because you've seen your family members, like, go through it. It's exciting, but it's very, you know, like, it's very scary also at the same time. Meanwhile, Arpit is arranging the party for the evening in a hotel in New Delhi, one of many big events. He doesn't mind the fact that his parents selected his bride for him. The question as to whether the bride and bridegroom will like and find each other attractive is seldom asked. In most of the cases in India, like, the elders involved and if the families are right for each other, they get married. 
but being lucky my parents gave me some time and her parents as well to actually like if you want to spend the life together you need some time to know each other and you know get compatible a family made us introduce we and we exchanged numbers we got to know each other then we went forward for the decision yeah the bride and groom were able to meet several times before the wedding but this is seldom the case in india at their first meeting arpit and ankita didn't really hit it off but then they got used to each other and finally they even got to like each other it took us a long time it took us almost a year if he hadn't proposed i wouldn't have married him but it would never have occurred to ankita to reject the bridegroom chosen for her like most other hindu women she accepts without complaint her own passive role and the dominance of the family if you don't find a boy you know your parents will and since they know you the best for like 25 24 years you can trust them on their choice it's not like you just go and select a groom there's like a whole process to it you meet the family you do a background check you ask 30 40 people about the family you ask about the boy and then It's only after that that you decide. A Hindu bride enters marriage a virgin. That is both a religious and social must. In India, it's considered it's still not an open thing. It's still considered really bad like it's it's not good to do it before wedding. A girl is supposed to remain a virgin. She should remain a virgin. That's what everyone thinks. The same applies for Hindu women from all social strata. They learn very early on that sexual contact before marriage must be avoided at all costs. Yes, uh, virginity for for young women is very much a part of uh, the Hindu religious texts. Issue of child marriages comes from that because it is said that a woman should be or a girl should be married immediately after her first menstruation when she can conceive so as not to have the stigma because one should also see that hinduism is also very very sensitive to the power of sexuality of human sexuality so they say we know how powerful it is so if she is not married off it is very likely liable that if she remains unmarried for a young for some years after puberty and all that she will so to say go astray will have sex and that is terrible so we should you should get her married uh, as early as possible the bride groom should also be a virgin when he marries hindu mythology says that even the mighty god shiva had to wait until after his wedding before having sexual intercourse with his beloved parvati the same should apply for arpit he prefers to leave the question open as to whether he has had affairs before marriage i believe everyone has a past and you actually meet someone for the present and to live for the future rather than like discussing someone's past and uh, i don't know it isn't usual in india to speak openly about sexuality although erotic images are certainly freely in evidence even if they are only advertisements for fruit juice there's a kind of a very crackling sexual energy all over which you see in kind of bollywood movies and the dances etc part of it but it has to be controlled in public in uh, in its uh, in its uh, manifestations this used to be different in the history of hinduism there have always been highly erotic pictures in connection with religion The temples of Kachurao from the 11th century are the most well-known example. The famous Kama Sutra originated a few centuries earlier. There has always been the eroticism in the Indian uh, tradition. In fact, one of the oldest texts Brihat Samhita says uh, uh, that the whole creation from the creator to the smallest worm is based on the union of male and female so why should we ashamed of it and in hinduism there has always been a tension between two extreme positions divine union on the one hand and religious asceticism on the other in the 11th century when the temples of kachurao were created the idea of erotic ecstasy was at its peak after 11th century the the ascetic or the priestly comes up again 
And that with the, comes much stronger with British colonialism because British colonialism comes with Victorian values. And in Victorian values, if you, I mean, that's not too long ago. They, in England, they used to even cover the legs of chairs uh, because these were legs, so they covered them with cloth. One senses this a little with Arpit and his bride. Modern Hindu society keeps itself covered up in public. Love and sex belong behind closed doors. In Hindu culture, it's fun. Like, I consider myself it's better to, you know, that love actually becomes, starts after marriage. Julia is on the way to Friday prayers. She devoted herself to Islam when she was very young, against her parents' wishes. Ben yaklaşık 10 yaşındaydım. İlkokul ilkokuldaydım. O zamanlar Kur'an öğrenme isteğim başladı. Ee, bir vakfa başlamıştım. O zamanın işte Hindi Gençlik Vakfı'ydı. Oraya başladığım zaman onların çok farklı yaşadığını gördüm işte. E, benim aksime işte sürekli namaz kılıyorlar, dualar ediyorlar, kapalılar. Bu da benim çok ilgimi çekti. Ailem çok istemedi. O an çok sıcak bakmadılar çünkü çok küçük oldum ve There are so many worshippers that the people have to pray in the open air on the square in front of the mosque. Men and women are strictly separated in the mosque, even more so than in daily life. This is according to Islamic law. Cami içerisinde peygamberimiz zamanından bu yana önce erkekler namazla saf tutmuş, ondan sonra kadınlar saf tutmuştur ama aynı yerde saf tutmuşlardır. Buna göre kadın ve erkek birbirine düşkün olarak yaratıldığına göre ve bunun kaidesi aşıldığı takdirde toplumu nereye götüreceği kestirilemeyeceğine göre İslam başta tedbirini almıştır. The magazine for which Hulia works observes these laws. Aisha is the Muslim answer to Western fashion magazines. Diğer dergilere baktığımız zaman e, kadının çok ciddi anlamda teşhir edildiğini, e, çok fazla e, tabiri caizse sunulduğunu gördük e, ve o dergilerde artık ciddi anlamda ahlak dışı şeyler vardı. Ve bir aile işte dergiyi alıp masanın üstüne rahatlıkla koyamıyor. Çünkü o an çocuğunun karıştırma ihtimali çok yüksek ve orada onun göreceği şeyler çok doğru olmayacak kadar bence ahlak dışıydı. Hulia checks the proofs. In a special edition, Aisha reports on the reception given by the editorial team attended by the wives of the top Turkish leaders. The present government is keen to see women supporting the traditional female role, wearing headscarves, promoting the concept of no sex before marriage. Es gibt bedauerlicherweise Familien, die nach wie vor bereit sind zu töten, wenn ihre Töchter nicht als Jungfrauen sich entpuppen in der Hochzeitsnacht. Wenn zu vermuten ist, dass sie ihre Jungfräulichkeit verloren haben. Es gab sogar einen Fall von Ehrenmord, wo der Bruder seine Schwester getötet hat und aufgrund der Obduktion durch die Staatsanwaltschaft wurde festgestellt, dass das Mädchen noch Jungfrau war. Der hat es vermutet, dass seine Schwester entjungfert wurde, entjungfert war, weil sie angeblich einen Freund hatte. Und hat sie daraufhin getötet. Also es gibt einfach noch zu viele Menschen in der Türkei, die bereit sind dafür, das Leben ihrer nächsten Frauen zu opfern. Western lifestyle magazines with their permissive pictures convey a concept of women that more and more Turks reject. It's unseemly to show bare skin in public, and physical contact is out of the question. On the underground in Ankara, couples have been asked over the loudspeaker to stop kissing. Hulia decided not to get married young and to defer her own sexual needs, even though, according to Islam, an adult woman should be married. My husband, of course, 
yüksek olması e, benim hayata daha güçlü durmamı sağladı. Çünkü her zaman bir, benim bir hayat felsefem vardı. Allah var, gam yok derdim ve o yüzden de yaşadığım her şeyin sadece bu hayatta ibar- bu hayattan ibaret olduğunu e, ve e, benim buradaki hayatımda sağlam yaşayıp ahiretime çalışmam gerektiğini öğretti bana. When Hulia designs her women's collection, she expresses her own idea of a traditional Islam and the part women play in it. Aisha has influential supporters and represents the ever-increasing conservative Islamic trend in Turkish society. Supporters of this backward-looking tendency rail against moral decline and call upon women to be virtuous. Dolayısıyla e, şu anda Türkiye'de hepimizin tedirginliği bu noktadadır. İran'da bunu gördük. Kim hep şunu söylüyorlar. Efendim Türkiye İran ol, İran olmaz. Hayır, olabilir. Çünkü Ee, eğer siz sürekli özgürlükler alanını kısıtlar ve bir e, mezhep içinden dindarlığı dikte etmeye kalkışırsanız gün gelir illa dinda, e, İran gibi olmaz ama başka bir e, rejimle karşı karşıya kalabiliriz. In Berlin, no one needs to fear a strict religious regime. Berliner Elena has complete sexual freedom. This is also because contraception and condoms are freely available, and there's no threat of an unwanted pregnancy, and because sex need not have any undesired consequences. Despite all this, she's still unclear. What should she do with all this freedom? If everything is permitted, then she has to set her own personal rules and look for the answers herself. What is good for her? Should she just follow her desires? And what part does love play in all this? Ich hatte jetzt in den letzten Jahren schon ein paar mal einen Freund und auch zwischendurch so kleine Geschichten, aber weiß nicht, ob ich jemals schon mal jemanden geliebt habe oder mich verliebt habe. Ich habe da selber für mich noch gar nicht so richtig die Definition gefunden und ich weiß nicht. The family encourage Elena to gain her own experience with no reservations, also as far as sex is concerned. Das wäre jetzt gesagt, damit achtet auch da und darauf überhaupt nicht. Wenn überhaupt vielleicht auch, ähm, dass man nicht mit ähm, ihr mitgibt, dass er schon ruhig auf sich Zeit lassen soll, auch zu gucken und das eben doch äh, aus meiner Sicht ja eine natürliche Sache ist, dass man ein Stück weit suchen soll und dass man dann vielleicht bei der Suche auch mehrere Partner hat, mit dem man vielleicht auch weitergeht und vielleicht auch sexuellen Kontakt hat und daraus lernt, was einem wichtig ist. If only it were that simple, especially in a city full of young people who are constantly on the lookout for a flirt. Where should the boundaries be set? What does it mean to have sex with someone? Mit jemandem zu schlafen, das ist was Besonderes. Du öffnest dich jemand anderem auf eine ganz andere Weise und bist halt dadurch auch verletzlich. Das ist mir bewusst und genau deshalb bin ich da halt auch gerne vorsichtig und sag, wir können uns gerne treffen und ich küsse dich auch gerne, aber irgendwo ist dann auch Schluss. Whom should she kiss and with whom should she do more? What are the criteria if everything is allowed? With and without feelings. Ich glaube, Ja, Sex ohne Gefühle, ja, kann auch ganz cool sein. Ich vermeide es eigentlich auch generell, mit Typen zu schlafen, mit denen ich nicht zusammen bin, weil ähm, ich das schon als ein Privileg ansehe, dass ich mit jemandem schlafe oder dass jemand mit mir schläft. Obwohl ich auch, äh, auch da schon mal eine Ausnahme gemacht habe, aber halt gemerkt habe, dass es nicht so... Wie, wie gesagt, da ist es dann halt mit den Gefühlen... Da geht es dann halt wirklich nur um das Körperliche und das ist, glaube ich, mir zu wenig. What does the evangelical church say about this? What are the guiding moral principles? Es geht ähm, letztlich um, Gott, um ein göttliches Gebot. Nicht? Und dann ist die Frage, wo meldet sich dieses göttliche Gebot? Nicht? Und ähm, das meldet sich im Gewissen. 
Nicht? Und äh, das würde ich schon sagen, also mit schlechten Gewissen ähm, sich auf sowas einzulassen, das sollte man einfach nicht tun. Wenn man das mit gutem Gewissen tun kann, ist es okay. Elena has never had a guilty conscience when she slept with someone. Her relationship to young men is generally relaxed. They go to parties or meet up to go swimming in the lake. Sometimes friendships develop into relationships. Sometimes she has a kiss and a cuddle with someone, and then it might lead to sex, even if this was not planned. You have to experiment and let things happen if you want to develop as a person. Also Kondome sind Pflichtprogramm auf jeden Fall. Also absolut. Ich meine, das ist nicht nur eine Verhütung, dass man nicht schwanger wird, sondern das ist ja auch gegen Krankheiten und ja, also das kommt für mich überhaupt nicht in Frage, keine Kondome zu benutzen. Also ja, das ist einfach so ein grundlegendes Ding, was ich halt von meinen Eltern gelernt habe und was ich auch absolut äh, überhaupt nicht in Frage stelle. Also das ist nicht wie Eis essen. Natürlich ist es auch eine Einsicht der Lebenserfahrung, dass ähm, solche Experimente schiefgehen können. Ähm, man steigt da nicht wie in ein Wannenbad und ähm, steigt wieder aus und rubbelt sich ab und damit ist es vergessen. So ist das nicht. At least Elena does not feel at a disadvantage to the boys. They meet as equals and make their own decisions as to what they want and don't want. In den Beziehungen, die ich bis jetzt hatte, war es auf jeden Fall eine absolute Gleichberechtigung da. Und wenn eher, dass ich die dominantere Person war in der Beziehung und was aus, dass ich irgendwie den ersten Schritt machen muss, weil sonst sich derjenige nicht sicher fühlt, ob er jetzt was machen darf für mir oder nicht oder ob er mich küssen darf zum Beispiel oder so. Und das hat mich am Anfang sehr irritiert. Es ist eigentlich auch ganz schön, weil dann ähm, ist man jetzt, wird man nicht einfach so überrumpelt oder so. Kann man halt selber entscheiden. So. For Elena, sexuality has both its serious and light-hearted side. But in one respect, she's adamant. A man who enters a loving sexual relationship with her has to at least understand her religious beliefs even if he doesn't share them. Ich war mit einem Jungen zusammen und ähm, ich wusste von Anfang an, dass er von Kirche absolut nichts hält und dass er sogar die Kirche sehr äh, negativ sozusagen einschätzt und dass er das auch nicht, nicht äh, gut findet, dass ich religiös bin. Und da war für mich dann halt irgendwann so ein Punkt erreicht, wo ich gesagt habe, nein, weil ich glaube, so nötig habe ich es jetzt nicht. In Tel Aviv, both exist side by side, strict orthodoxy and sexual liberality. Physical love before marriage is no taboo in non-orthodox circles. I was born free. אני יודעת מה זאת אהבה, מה הקיום האנושי שלי, מה החוויות שלי, מה, מהשיעורים שאני לקחתי על עצמי ללמוד בחיים. אני יודעת מה זאת אהבה. מירה was 47 when she became a rabbi. She thinks sexuality is more than just the meeting of two bodies. When two become one flesh, this also has a spiritual dimension for her. אם אתה שואל אותי מה זאת אהבה בין בני זוג, 
אז הנה, יש פה שני בני זוג. הנה שניים. It's a couple. <laughs> שני בני זוג. לכל אחד יש גוף. והם נורא שונים, זה אפילו שבור. יש אנשים שמתחתנים עם אנשים נכים, שאין להם זה, הנה, יש פה אפילו בן זוג נכה אחד. והם שונים, והם אחרים וזה, ופה אף פעם אין אחד, תמיד. ופה אחד יכול לפצוע את השני ולהכאיב לשני. אבל לעשות אהבה, להיות באהבה בזוגיות, זה זה. זה אהבה. זה, זו, אהבה. Friday midday, the Sabbath will soon begin, the Jewish weekend. For strictly devout Jews, this is a day of prayer and rest, but in Tel Aviv, they also like to party. Avihu is waiting to perform with his band. The two could not be more different. Avihu is impulsive and likes to discuss things. Other things are important for Shira. So, for me, it's very nice that everything is like this, that I love it. שזה כאילו, יש, יש אחד, גם בפיזי וגם ברוח וגם ב, בשר וגם ב... וזה נורא מצחיק, כי כשהתחלנו לצאת, אנחנו מאוד לא דומים. אבל אנשים התחילו להגיד לנו שאנחנו דומים. זה the same flash. For both of them, sex is essential to their life. In the seven years they've been together, their attraction to each other has not waned. I think that love... Now, tell me that I'm not going to pick it. Love is... in the core of... Love is not a rage. It's a joy. זה עניין של... זה קיים, זה שם. אהבה זה מה שמחבר את כולנו, זה לא, זה לא רגש, זה לא רק כימי ל, ל, ל, ל, לכמה זמן, ודווקא, ובגלל זה אני חושב שיש לנו אהבה, כי זה כבר מעבר, ל, כי זה מעבר לרגש הראשוני שהיה, הוא, הוא, הוא, הוא החיבור, זה, זה החיבור. Wir können in der Sexualität etwas Spirituelles erleben. Und das hat sich im Judentum doch noch erhalten, mit dem Gebot sozusagen in der Schabbatnacht miteinander zu schlafen. Also in der Nacht von Freitag auf Samstag, diese große Freude, dass der Sabbat kommt, dass es Gott gibt, dass man Jude ist, eben zu steigern durch die Empfindung der Sexualität. Friends and families meet in the beach bars. Some are on the lookout for a one-night stand. Something unimaginable for orthodox Jews. ואני מבינה שאם יש אנשים שיש להם דרך אחרת, ובייחוד אם הם נולדו לתוך עולם אורתודוקסי, וחינכו אותם מי שהם היו קטנים, זה מותר וזה אסור, וטוב להם עם זה, שיהיה להם טוב. הרפורמים הם הראשונים ככה סוחבים את העגלה מהבוץ. הרפורמים, בא, אחר כך באים הקונסרבטיביים, אחר כך באות הנשים האורתודוקסיות המודרניות, יותר לאט לאט ככה. מה שהרפורמים עושים עכשיו, הקונסרבטיבים עושים עוד עשר שנים, האורתודוקסים יעשו עוד חמישים שנה, המודרניים, והאורתודוקסים החרדים, אני יודעת, גם ייקח להם עוד זמן. רק עוד פעמונים חסר לנו פה, כי זה האחד, זה לא מפריע, זה אנחנו ביחד. In the evening, Shira and Avihu are at the Sabbath service that Mira and her congregation are celebrating in the open air. Despite all their liberality and freedom, these rituals and ceremonies are precious to both of them. באמת שיכולנו גם לא להתחתן ולהיות ככה או לעשות את זה בצורה... אבל הטקס מבחינתי הוא, הוא חשוב לי. כי אני מאמין באנרגיה. אני לא חייב להיות דתית, אבל האנרגיה של המילים שאתה מוציא, הכוונה. אז זה מעבר למילים, הכוונה להגיד את זה אחד לשני ולהתחייב בכוונה, באנרגיה, במיוחד שזה מול אנשים, שאתה כאילו מצעיר. זה דבר שהוא חשוב מבחינתי, וחשוב לי כי זאת... הייתי רוצה שזה יהיה לי עם שיר. תסתכלו על השקיעה. ושמרו בני ישראל את השבת לארצות את השבת. ניו דלי. ארפיט דאנסס הפלי את אחד מהמאות פארטיס לפני הבדלים. 
one of the last opportunities to enjoy himself as a single man. He makes the most of this time and celebrates with his pals. As a single person, obviously, it was fun and uh, it was enjoyable and, you know, you're free. You even, like, okay, you have family, but still you can, you know, live out your life. Now I feel like, you know, you have added responsibility. That's the end of any prenuptial affairs. Now he can admit it. Yes, he did have girlfriends before marriage. You're bound to have affairs in that age, and uh, whether you're 21 or whether you're 22, that's a... Uh, age one gets in love. Even in India, it's not against Hindu culture or any... It's not against any culture to actually have a girlfriend. Amongst Hindus, there's a great distinction between men and women. Even today, when choosing a wife, the dowry still plays an important part. Although it's forbidden by law, it is still practiced in all stratas of society. Furthermore, as almost everywhere, what men are allowed to do is not tolerated for women, especially when it comes to sexual morality. Sexual pleasure was always allowed to the male and not to the female outside, outside marriage. That is also has also a, has a long history, uh, that in marriage, as if that is, then that is the only way where the woman is supposed to have the sexual pleasure. The marital bed has been prepared. The day of the last wedding ceremony has arrived. Now the strict rituals have to be followed even more closely. Arpit submits to everything. He knows what he owes to his family. Now comes the serious part. According to a custom popular throughout India, the bridegroom rides to the temple on horseback. The noisy procession is an expression of his esteem for the bride. Prayers are said in the temple to the gods Vishnu and Lakshmi. ये तो विष्णु भगवान बन गया लक्ष्मी तो सभी हमारे दोनों समाज लड़का लड़की का आपस में दोनों की पूजा करते हैं और ऊपर वाले का स्वरूप मान के उनकी पूजा करते हैं In Hindu mysticism sex is always a spiritual act the male and female sexual organs, yoni and lingam, are worshipped in the temple. They symbolize divine union. But sexuality in the Hindu religious tradition is not just copulation. It is not just sleeping together. It is much, much more than that, that you are playing with the fire of creation. It is something sacred because it is taking part in that ritual of creation which underlies the universe itself. And that is what uh, often the, what would say, the traditional Hindus, conservative Hindus, look very askance at the West, that here, there, it has become a game. The last phase of the ceremony begins. Just a few decades ago, this was when the bride and groom met for the first time. Arpit and Ankita belong to the first generation of Hindus who were allowed to get to know each other before the wedding. The priest recites incantations and special phrases for good luck, and he also calls upon the gods to bless the couple with a fulfilled sexual life together. <laughs> उसे हम उसका संतुलन खो जाते हैं सुषमा नाड़ी कहते हैं उसे सुषमा या इनको सुना लेना सुषमा नाड़ी है वो हमारा केंद्र बिंदु जो मैं टीका लगा रहा ना और स्त्रियां बिंदी लगाती है ना वो क्यों लगाती है ये केंद्र बिंदु है आपित और अंकिता आर नाउ मैन एंड वाइफ आपित इज ग्रेटली लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू देयर वेडिंग नाइट Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But uh, it's better that I would stay in a hotel 
and just be together with her rather than the hosh posh of the house like just be ourselves many of the world religions young believers still abide by the sexual laws of their culture and accept the limitations on their freedom to a greater or lesser degree sex before marriage is not permitted in any religion except for young protestants they have to learn how to deal with this freedom in a responsible way in the next part a jewish settler couple a muslim taxi driver a catholic married couple and a buddhist monk reveal how they find fulfillment in love